Okay, friends, this is day one of our new online Bible study and our reading plan, reading through the book of Esther. For some of you, you have been a part of these reading plans for almost two years now. It's hard to believe we started these in March of 2020. For some of you, you are jumping in for the first time, and I'm so glad that you're a part of this. This kind of rhythm of daily reading through some portions of the scripture and then studying it a little bit, helping to understand them a little bit more deeply, that rhythm can be such a huge blessing in our lives. I'm glad that you're a part of this. So we're going to read five days a week, little parts of Esther, and then these videos will be about five minutes, put a little bit of color on what's happening. Today, what I want to do is two things. Give us a little bit of an overview of what's happening in verses one through nine, and then one of the major themes that we can look towards in this book of Esther, we'll be talking about other major themes as we go also. So I'm glad that you are a part of this, and I hope that you stick with it over the next three weeks. Okay, Esther chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. I'm not going to read it. Let's talk about what's happening here. The first major person that we're introduced to is Ahasuerus. So he's a king reigning over a huge geographic area. I'd encourage you to get out a map. Look at just the swath of land between India and Ethiopia. That's what this guy is reigning over. He's got a throne uh, in the capital city of Susa. Your translation may actually call him Xerxes, and that is because we are pretty confident that this person that we're reading about in Esther is the historical figure, Xerxes I, who reigned over the first Persian Empire. Why? There's some similarities between the name when you translate it between uh, Hebrew and Greek, and just the description of where he reigned, uh, when he reigned, all of that, it fits that historical figure. He's living in Susa, which is one of four capital cities over the Persian Empire. One of the other four is Babylon that you've heard about. And this is taking place at the time of the exile. If you don't know exactly what that means, that's fine. We'll talk more about that at some point. But it is the period when um, the Jews had been captured. Many of them had been kidnapped. Others had been driven out of Jerusalem. And they're now living in um in exile, they're living outside of their homeland, most of them, and it's a time when they feel like, where is God, and when is God going to restore things? So Esther is a woman who was uh, uh, likely uh, kidnapped, taken out of Jerusalem. We'll find out later that her parents were killed, and she is living in this foreign land, and verses 1 through 9 paint a picture for us of what this place was like. So what was it like to live under King Xerxes or Hazarus? Well, we then see that he throws a 180-day party, which is just, you can imagine how lavish this is. You then get into verse 5, and there's a smaller party that he throws. It's seven days for the people of Susa, and you can see all the, the, just the lavish details of what this party was like. And then you get to verse 8, which is kind of hard to translate. Um, different translations translated in different ways. The ESV that I'm reading says, And drinking was according to this edict. There is no compulsion, for the king had given orders to all the staff in his palace to do as each man desired. It seems like what is happening here, and look, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I took Hebrew a long time ago, learned it then. I like, But it seems like what is happening from, from what, I, what I can gather um, is that the edict is let every man drink as much as he wants to. Like, that's the one rule, is that don't limit um, the amount of drinking that's taking place here. And you can just imagine there's a lot of it. And then we find out in the last verse that we're reading today, verse 9, there's actually a second banquet. There's the one for the men, and then there's one for the women that Queen Vashti hosts, and it almost seems like a little bit of an afterthought. This is the background for Esther. This kind of king in this kind of community, this is the backdrop. This is the place in which Esther and the other people that we're going to meet throughout this story are living. Here's one major thing that I want you to keep your eyes on. We're going to see that Esther is a young woman for whom life does not go well. We'll kind of track that pattern throughout the book, but things do not go well for her. So this is a story about how do we remain faithful when things don't go well and pushing it even further. Esther is one of only two books in the Bible. The other is the Song of Songs and the Song of Solomon. One of only two books in the Bible where God is not mentioned at all. The word God doesn't appear in this story. God doesn't show up in this story. 
So it's a question not only of what do we do when things don't go well, but what do we do when things don't go well and we don't seem to think that God is around? Where, where is God in the midst of this? Things aren't going well. And where is God? How do we remain faithful in those moments? This is the beginning of the book of Esther. And I hope that it will be a tremendous blessing to you. And I hope that it will be a tremendous blessing to some other people through you. What you're going to read, some of it's right for you. And some of it's for somebody who's not reading this, but needs to hear some of the truth. And they're going to hear it not from the book itself, but they're going to hear it from you. So be faithful. Stick with the reading. Stick with these online Bible studies. Keep it up. God bless you, friends. And I'll see you next time.